Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about kinetic energy <coughs> and conventional and generalized external power expenditures. So this will give us what would typically be called the mechanical energy equation if you're in, say, a fluid mechanics class. Alright, so in high school physics, we learned, one hopes, <coughs> that uh, the power expended by a force F acting on a particle moving with velocity v is the inner product of the force and the velocity. So that is P, the power is equal to <coughs> F dot V. <coughs> so in this sense, um, that the power, a scalar value, is equal to the inner product of a force and a velocity, the, uh, the force can be thought of as power conjugate <coughs> or dual to velocity. All right, the same principle <coughs> here that applies to forces on point masses <coughs> and their velocity being the power expended, well, that also applies to force density on a continuum body as long as we consider it in terms of integration over the body. <coughs> So we would have that the power expended by <coughs> the conventional body force B naught is equal to the integral <coughs> over the body in the spatial configuration of B naught dot V integrated over the volume. So that's the power expended by the conventional body force on the body in our frame of reference. So <coughs> if we're in a different frame of reference observing this, you know, the velocity might be different. And so that power would be different. Um, more on that later on. So the velocity field is a smooth section of the tangent bundle in that it's differentiable everywhere and it maps a point to a corresponding velocity which is a member of the tangent space so v <coughs> mapping say b t to you know the tangent yeah, we'll say <clears throat> it maps all the points in BT to we'll say it maps X. <coughs> to the tangent bundle like that. <clears throat> um, so so V is an element 
of the tangent bundle, which is like that. <clears throat> well, the force is then a member of the cotangent bundle because it is a dual vector to V. So B naught maps X to the set of covectors at X. And so <clears throat> forces live in and are, in fact, well, body forces are smooth sections of the cotangent bundle. <coughs> All right. The power expended on a spatial region convecting with the body by external surface and body forces is going to be like this. <clears throat> we'll call it W naught. And this is going to be called the conventional external power. <clears throat> it is defined as the integral over the boundary of T n, so the surface force, the traction force, dot the velocity, so that's the rate of work at the surface, dV plus the integral over the volume of the conventional body force dot the velocity, so this doesn't include inertia, dV. <clears throat> so from thermodynamics, we'll remember that the external power, you know, the external rate of work, which is this, can go into two things. It can go into changing the kinetic energy well, we'll say the mechanical energy, since it could also go into, say, <clears throat> doing work against gravity. So it, it can either increase the mechanical energy of P sub T, that region convecting with the body, or it can be dissipated internally as heat. All right, so we can write out the kinetic energy <coughs> over P sub T. Fancy K of P sub T is defined as the integral over P sub T of one half rho V dot V dV. If we look at the time derivative of that, considering P as convecting with the body, then that is equal to, we're going to have twice <coughs> V dot dot V times one half. So that's going to go like this. Rho V dot, so the inertial 
you know, the, well, the inertial force in the opposite sense. So that is equal to <coughs> the integral of minus i dot v dv, where i is the inertial or d'Alembert force that we had talked about before. All right, so if we look at integrating <coughs> now the generalized body force, which includes the inertia, B dot V over the body, that is equal to the integral over the body of the conventional body force plus the integral over the body of the inertial body force. And so that is equal to <coughs> the same thing or rather minus minus the time derivative of the kinetic energy of the body. All right, also from the divergence theorem where we're going to take the transpose of T. This one appeared <coughs> in our homework a good couple times. Uh, the integral over the boundary of T n dot V dA wrote that down as a dv in my notes there. I've got to change that. All right. Well, taking the transpose of t and using the divergence theorem in one step, that's going to be the integral <coughs> over the body now of v dot div t plus t inner product grad the integrated over the volume. Well, from the balance of momentum, we know that V dot div T plus B, where B is the generalized body force, that has to equal zero for all v, not just v equal to the velocity, since um, you know this whole thing here has to equal vector zero by the balance of linear momentum. So it works when V is any vector field, not just the velocity, but it also works in particular when V is the velocity. <coughs> so in that case, um, V dot div T is minus V dot B. So we can say that the integral over the boundary of t n dot v dA is equal to, did it again in my notes there, <coughs> that's going to be equal to the integral <coughs> over the volume of T inner product grad V minus B dot V dV. <coughs> All right, so now if we look at T dot grad V, T inner product grad V, the spatial gradient, 
Well, that is equal to t inner product d, the symmetric part, plus t inner product w, the skew symmetric part. And that is equal to just t ugh, inner product d since t inner product w is equal to 0 for all w in skew and v. <coughs> And that is because T, the Cauchy stress, we proved in the last lecture, has to be symmetric. All right, so we're going to split the right-hand side of this up into two integrals and move the generalized body force to the, well, just the conventional part. We'll move it over to the left side, and then we'll eventually move the inertial part back. So here we go. The integral over the boundary. T N dot V D A plus the integral over the body of B, which now includes the inertial force. That is equal to the integral <coughs> over the body of T inner product D dv. All right, so now we're going to split b into the conventional body force and the inertial force. So we'll write it a little smaller. All right, so that, <coughs> which you probably recognize as the conventional external power, is equal to the integral over the body of T inner product D dV plus the time derivative of the integral PT one half rho v dot v dv. All right, so this thing here is w naught <coughs> of pt, the conventional external power. <coughs> This here, T inner product D, we're going to call that the internal power. Which is also called the dissipation, often. And this is the kinetic energy rate. And that'll be the time derivative of K, you know, following the material. <coughs> so let's define the generalized external power as, you know, the internal one plus the inertial effects. I believe I said the generalized as the conventional plus inertial effect, uh, which is correct if that's what I said. If I said something else, then it was probably wrong. And 
And so that one, in keeping with our convention, is just going to be w of pt is defined as the integral over the boundary t n dot v dA <coughs> plus the integral over the body of the generalized body force. So that. Now the generalized external power is simply equal to the internal <coughs> power because we've moved the only other term, the kinetic energy rate, into it. <coughs> All right, so like we said, the power expended on P by external forces and by inertia is balanced by the power expended within P, the internal power, which is always a loss, um, and that would be associated with heating. Often we want to develop equations of motion for scenarios with negligible inertial effects. An example in fluid mechanics would be Stokes flow. Uh, so that would be like very low Reynolds number flow. The textbook gives an example <clears throat> of squeezing a toothpick paste out of a tube. That would be a very good example. Um, tectonic plate motion would be a pretty good example. You know, just all very slow, viscousy sort of processes. So, negligible inertial effects. What it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that K PT equals zero or <clears throat> that its time derivative equals zero. All it means is that it, those two, or at least the time derivative part, only that k p t dot is small compared to the other terms. So effectively, we have instead that the conventional external power, instead of the generalized external power, is equal to the internal power, which is to say that all work done on the body <coughs> is dissipated as heat. Um, and that would be instead of W of PT, which would include inertial effects. Um, the reason that we make the distinction that these are not zero is that there's a lot of times where you might want to calculate the velocity field, say, for a Stokes flow, but maybe it's an unsteady one or something. Um, but then later on, you might be trying to post-process some other result for it, and you might want to know what the time derivative of that is in some other sense. And so it's, uh, you know, it's not that it is zero, it's that you can solve for, say, the velocity field without accounting for it, and then if you wanted to calculate the inertial <clears throat> stuff afterward, you could. All right, that's all we had for this lesson. It was a pretty short one. Next one will be on frame indifference. Um, we'll combine chapters 20 and 21. Hopefully that one won't be too long. All right, have a good one. Catch you later.